Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's time for our second hot topic. And this is a statement by the former deputy um, governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Kinsley Mogalu. And he says, expecting the Naira to be 400 Naira to the dollar is a dream. And that is by Kinsley Mogalu. Joining us to have a conversation about this is Mokhtar Mohammed. He's an international finance and economics analyst. He's joining us from Lagos State. Good morning, Mokhtar. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Okay, so um, the, former the former deputy governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria made a statement on his X um, platform, and it says, you know, expecting the Naira to be 400 Naira to the dollar is a dream. Now, I know that just a few years ago, in fact, um, Bef just after the lockdown, after COVID, we had seen the, the dollar rise to about 400, right? But that's just about four years ago, or maybe three and a half years ago. And now the deputy governor, uh, former deputy governor, is saying it's, it's a dream to even think of that. Something that happened just about three years ago is a dream to even think the Naira can be um, as strong. What do you think about that statement? Do you think it is a dream or do you think it's something that we can actually push for? Thank you once again. Um, Thank you. It's, it's free to dream. Mm. So I don't see anything bad in us dreaming that the Naira will get to 400. After all, speculators dream. Mm. that the Naira will get to 2,000, and the Naira has come to 1,300. So there's nothing bad in dreaming in economics terms. Um, I mean, we are free to dream. It costs us nothing to dream. Now, when, when you look at what he's trying to say, he's trying to look at, um, do we all, all really have the pedigree to make sure that the Naira to the dollar gets to that amount? I think um, it's a dream too far in the short term, but it's not a dream that is not possible especially if you look at some of the policy that the government have put in place, especially if you look at how the government is trying to make the FX policy very transparent. We are where we are today because the FX policy have never been transparent. So we are beginning to see a little bit of transparency about to come into the FX, but we've not seen it yet, but we're about to see it. That is what. But again, when you look at the original price of the Naira, the Naira is currently undervalued. And again, um, the, the, the World Bank and others have said the Naira will gain about 25% over the dollars this year. And if you see that kind of percentage game continue over the years, then you could be thinking of that. But in the, sh um, in the future, there's nothing bad in us dreaming um, for it to be possible in the near future. So that's what I, I personally think about it. I think... Um, um, it's, it's possible, but again, there's a lot of work to be done. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not something we should be dreaming will happen in the next one year, in the next two years, in the next two years. It's something that we continue to work on. Maybe by the time we, 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 we fix our refineries and we begin to do local refining of petroleum products, we don't, ex we don't export refined petroleum, we don't import refined petroleum product any longer. Whether we export refined petroleum product, we add more efforts into our economy. We grow the non-oil sector. We begin to export most of our our, our, our agricultural output, and and then now uh, we mustn't forget the service sector. Mm. We are the mainstay, the tech sector, which Nigeria is a key player in Africa. If we are able to build that infrastructure, also that could be a game changer. So mm. uh, I don't think there's anything bad in dreaming, but mm. in the short term it's not possible. But in the long term, I think it's very possible. Okay, so, I mean, moving on to his statement, one thing he said, you know, was the fact that we need to focus on the creation of value-added manufacturing export economy that earned forex beyond oil and real, um, and in real and significant terms, the better. But one thing he also said was, we do not have $100 billion in foreign reserves. Um, so on what basis would the Naira forex rate return to some fantasy land, in his words, soon? It will also take time to regain or achieve Achieve full investor confidence, such as we had when we were there, and the rate was 150 to 165 to the dollar. Now, I remember when I was in uni, the dollar was about 130 something, sort of, but now we're seeing 2,000, we're seeing 1,900. However, like you said, it's already about 1,300 and something. Speculators have said maybe in a few weeks it will get to 1,200, which is great. But what are the actions we can take for us to even get to the 400? So, well, Kinsley Mogadou well, has yeah, rightly yeah. said, pardon? He has said some, 
He has said something that they, where they were when they were there, and I agree with him. I think he was talking about when he was there during the time of mm -hmm. the president, Molusha um, Gobasanjo and Good Luck Billy Jonathan. Our result was about a hundred bill. That mm -hmm. was when we were thinking of removing subsidy at that time. So um, that would have worked, and maybe at that time we have floated our currency. That would have worked. Mm -hmm. But again, let's look at it this way again. Um, if so, do you think that was a very uh, big mistake? Not to do it at that. It time. was a big mistake. Yeah, it was a big mistake not allowing the currency to to I mean to I mean to to, to remove subsidy at that time. It was mm -hmm. a very very big mistake. I keep saying it was a political suicide by the then um, by the then APC who are now in government. I maybe they never thought they come that point, but mm -hmm. it was a very big political mistake and it was a suicide. And at the end of the day, they are the one paying the price more for it than the, the good luck administration. Mm -hmm. uh, what we did that time was that we had the SS crude account and which was later turned into the sovereign um, sovereign wealth um, account. And at that time what we did that we finished the oil benchmark below the, the price of oil. And then whatever we end we, we put in our reserve as savings. What we end above the oil benchmark was put in the reserve as savings. As it stands now it more or less like we we, we virtually spend everything that we earn. Because the difference between the current oil benchmark and what is sold for is um, less than um, um, three dollars or five dollars, so definitely it's a challenge. And then we are still paying subsidy in one way or the other. Even if government have not categorically come to tell us that we are doing that, so for us to get to that hundred billion savings, I totally agree with him that we need to do a lot, especially in the non-oil sector and, uh, like I said, exporting. And refined petroleum product. Make sure that we are not we are, we are we are not depending on them so much into other uh, um, importing them um, refined petroleum product into the country. Then we grow our non oil sector. And when you talk about value added service service, we must not look away from the service sector. When people keep talking about manufacturing, yeah, manufacturing is good. It is the paid work of any economy. But there are some com countries that have not um, been involved in manufacturing, but yet they are the drivers of one of the economic indices in the world. We talk about UE. What they did is to provide the enabling environment for other investors to come in and invest. So that also could be a game changer. We shouldn't just be thinking, oh, it's the manufacturing because we have the population. Yeah, that is good. But we must also begin to look at um, the non-extractive sector of the Nigerian economy, the service sector. Mm. How can we boost investment in that sector that will not cost us so much in doing so what has some untapped sectors um for me i mean if i was to think top of my head i know we're not doing so much with um uh, tourism and that is because we still have like a security crisis in nigeria so no one wants to come to a place where they don't feel secured um education for instance and i said this earlier in the show if you look at the uk most, in fact, a lot of their revenue comes from education because they provide good education to ensure that people come from all parts of the world to study there so that way they get more money. Um, agriculture, we feel, it, it seems like the oil boom came and everybody forgot how Nigeria was even built before, the, the, before we discovered oil. And so agriculture is not so much. If you think about it, almost, almost what we eat, almost all of the things that we eat is probably imported. We don't really try to um, support the, the local manufacturers or the farmers, except maybe for perishable goods. So what are some untapped sectors that, you know, for you, you feel like we're not really utilizing it for us to be able to start to make more money and even have these foreign reserves that we need? I think one of your most untapped sector is the tech tech sector. Mm -hmm. uh, you see Nigerians come up with content, Nigerian youth, especially are the yes. most creative in Africa in the tech sector. That's what we call the service sector. You see all the big players, Google, Microsoft, um, uh, even Apple, uh, Facebook, Meta. They are trying to have offices in Nigeria because of the creativity of the Nigerian youth. So we need to look at that sector also. And we have the youth population in Africa, one of the biggest youth population and the most vibrant youth population in Africa. That mm -hmm. sector, you know, can attract over $20 billion yearly into the Nigeria um, uh, economy. We need to look at that sector. But to build that sector, you need to build the infrastructure. And that is where power comes to play because nobody wants to be in this space without power. 
So the Nigerian youth have actually tried being in those space without power, but they will do better if they have power. Then secondly, also you've talked about education. Um, you can see that in the 60s, you know, up to the 90s, we've seen Nigerian university attracting uh, uh, foreign students, especially within Africa. Yeah. But now it's a pity we see Nigerian universities, even Nigerian students going to places like Ghana, Burundi, Kenya, even for secondary schools. Mm. So I think it's a sector that we need to work on. And I, and I'm proud to say that some Nigerian universities have been working, especially in the private sector. Yeah. We've seen that play out in universities like the Covenant University. We've seen that play out in, even in the, the member, the week we invested, even if it had not started and it has begun to build a premium for himself as one of the universities that will attract foreign students. And some, some Nigerians in the diaspora actually bring their students to some of these universities outside the shore of this country. I mean, from other than in the diaspora, bring their children into Nigeria to school some of these private investing because of the character that they tend to develop in the student that is better than what they have outside the shop of this country. So education also is one mm -hmm. key area. For tourism, you see, when it comes to tourism, there's a lot of things involved. Um, you've talked about problems, we talk about security. Second, has to do with power. Then thirdly, it has to do with the people. You need to have a people-friendly environment. You need to have security. Also, you need to invest too much into it. So. Uh, the bottom line is that we need to think of investment. We need to think of investment in infrastructure. We have the Budukatu Ranch, which have been there before some years ago. And, but now I think it's, it's, it's even difficult to put a good there because the road networks are not good. It's not that the environment is not there. So we need to begin to build things like that. Yeah, tourism is one area we should also look at. We'll do more work very closely in Ogun State. We've not even the, the Mambela Plateau. Hello. A lot of all these okay. things that we need to build on, but unfortunately, um, I don't think we have been able to look within that space. We are all, all like you said, we're looking towards oil, oil because mm -hmm. it seems to be easier to earn all the effects than putting in the works to develop other sectors. Mm. Okay, so um, you, had, you had rightly said we need more investment. Obviously, Nigeria, even more, most of our manufacturing um, companies are leaving, right? But do you think that we have a good and thriving economy for us to actually attract these investors coming in? I mean, the president has been traveling. He's been looking for foreign investors to come in. But there's always that saying that if you don't have your house in order, nobody wants to come visit. Nobody wants to come there. So if we don't have a good economy, possibly nobody wants to come and put their money in a place whereby they don't think it will be profitable for them. So what do you think about the economy? Do you think we can actually, um, you know, boastfully attract some foreign investors, some good foreign investors that can actually come and, you know, even help our economy? Yes, we have attracted it before, and I think we can still do it. Um, number one, we need to create the enabling environment. Um, there have to be the two-way exchange system. No investor wants to come to your economy and then if I make my money, I'm able to export my money back to my country. That is the challenge that we always have because by the time we have effects problem, we want to hold back and they, they, they also want to effect, export their money out of the country. And remember that some of this money have effects in, in money, so they need that will affect that result. So we need to begin to create that two exchange system. Um, you talk about manufacturing. There are a lot of... Um, companies that are leaving and just like those are leaving there are others that are coming but we don't hear the news of those that are coming we always hear the news of those that are leaving nigeria is a consumer driven economy and what it means is that any product that is friendly any product that is people oriented will have the market here in nigeria so a lot of people want to come in because of our population because our like i said we are a consumer driven economy that's why i'm saying that uh, the government don't, we, yeah, we need the manufacturing sector. We don't all need to set up manufacturing plant. We can create that environment where manufacturers can come to Nigeria and be able to establish their plant and be able to do business. Also, we can create that into a whereby we become a hub whereby manufacturers can come also. So it's a two way thing. It's up to us to do what we ought to do to, to, to improve upon um, those sectors. But I totally agree with you that we have all we need to attract more investors into the com a country. But again, when it comes to monetary policy, monetary policy will always do what it ought to do, which is global best practice. The physical side need to wake up and begin to think of how they can also impact the economy through physical policies that will attract long-time investors. That is the key. And I don't, I don't, I don't, that has not been in existence over the eight years of President Buhari. 
and um, in the in the in this current administration, maybe it's early days, but I have not seen that synergy yet. Mm. So you're talking about monetary policy and fiscal policy as well. What are some reforms that you think the government, specific reforms that you think the government can put in place for us to um, start to see the Naira appreciate? In fact, you know what? Let me backtrack a little bit. For you, what are some factors that you think led to where we are now? Um, right now, obviously, we're mm. seeing the devaluation of the Naira. So what are some factors that you think this is, this is what has happened for us to even get here? And then these are some reforms that can, you know, just help us make a U-turn from where we are to a better economy. One of the major challenges that has brought us to where we are today has to do with the, the subsidy regime. Mm. We're paying subsidy for what does not even exist. I think it was the largest uh, mustard of eating so deep in our economy subsidy, especially the petroleum plus subsidy. We, 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 we stayed that in that space for so long a time. And we made a lot of people billionaires without even supplying anything. And this subsidy regime was all a scam. And I think most Nigerians now agree that it was a scam with the current uh, removal of subsidy and all of a sudden and the consumption of our fuel goes uh, has gone down. So I think um, one of the biggest uh, uh, issues that brought us to where we are today is our, our inability to remove subsidy on petroleum product. That is one. Secondly, again, our FX regime and the foreign exchange regime was filled with a lot of practicing, um, trying to you 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 get the period of change. They were not really regulated. They collected about twenty thousand dollars every week, and yet they were selling above the approved price of CBN, and CBN was doing nothing about it. And thirdly, again, we had uh, we had the non-oil sector that there was nothing done to improve upon that sector. That sector was just common to so. Those were the things that have taken us to where we are today. And what are those things that we need to do to take us to a better place? One, we have done one of the removal sources, even if it's not in totality. Hopefully, within before the end of the year, we might get there where we begin to import, we begin to um, 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 do local refining of our internal consumption of petroleum product. Secondly, the non-oil sector needs to be needs to be one of the key drivers of the Nigerian economy, especially the agricultural sector. And when I talk about the agricultural sector, it's not being a jack of all trade, master of none. Mm. We must look at our competitive advantage in agriculture and begin to key into that and develop that sector. Let us be a hub on that on, in, in that space. I think if we do those two, and then thirdly, we need to begin to look at tax as a way to grow our economy, not just for revenue alone. We need to begin to see how we can use tax to grow the economy, we can use tax to attract big players, especially in the tech space where we have a lot of youths that are involved in it. We, we, we bring most of those big players here and give them tax rebate for some time. I mean, real tax rebate, not the type political tax rebate that we've been given because you know somebody in government. Mm -hmm. That also could be a game changer and also attract the informal sector into the tax bracket, not taxing the already tax. If we're able to do these four policies, I think, and consistently improve upon them, we we'll definitely be one of the most prosperous nations in the world. Well, amen to that. <laughs> I mean, that is, that is the goal. That is the dream of every Nigerian. Um, but allow me to go off tangent a little bit. Now, the president has been in office for about 10 months. Um, on May 29th, it would be one year in office. If you look at our economic architecture at the moment, how would you grade the president's, um, well, t first 10 months, let me not say first, first one year, first 10 months in office um, for us to go to, um, well, I think dollar as of last year was still about 700 and something. And then for us to go that to almost 2,000 Naira, well, and now 1,300, how would you rate the first year of the Tinubu's administration? I think it's, it, 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 it has been poor. Uh, if you talk about rating, I think it has been very poor economically, and especially when you look at um, in terms of where we were when they came in. in the, this um, FX was about, I think it was about 600 to 700 when they came in. And I think they have not handled that issue very well. They allowed the gap to go on and on. But luckily, they are doing something about it now. So definitely, um, that if you look at that, um, a lot of Nigerians are far more in the poverty level. Mm. There's more high inflation. They, they met the inflation at about um, maybe like 18%. Today, inflation is about um, 
30, 31%. So yeah. definitely that has not also helped them. Uh, you look at uh, the, the number, like I said, the number of Nigerians that are out of job also over the 10 months that they have come in has been have not been good also. So when you look at that, you think it's poor. But when you look at the policy they have put in place to attract growth, to, to move the economy from where it is to where they want it to be, I think you should give them some code of, some or some decision they took are very, very um very, very strong, uh, very, very uh, um, a strong decision that a lot of government before them have shied away from remove our subsidy floating of the Naira, even if it has cost to where we are today. This was a policy that needed to go, even if they didn't, they started in a shaky ground, they did not do it very well. But I think if, if the policy is there and they are trying to reject it, they are learning through the world. Um, I think those are good policy. The policy of um, liberalization of the FX market also putting up um, a policy in place. So when you look at the policy side, you could say they have put up the policy, but again, policy does not, result of our policy does not come overnight. It could take years, it could take months. But we'll begin to see those um, results in the near term and in the near uh, um, future. So when you look at that, you say they've done well. But when you look at um, where the Nigerians were before they came in and where they are now, I think um, the, the administration has not done very well. So um, I, I say that um, where we are was not the art making. Let's be, let's be factual about it. For eight years of the Buhari administration, Nigeria were, were living in a very orthodox economic policy, a policy that was not working, a policy that was shown with a lot of corruption, and nothing was done about it. And when they came in, they made an economy that was non-existent. They had to take the hard decision, but they didn't have the the background information, they did not put in the structure to take those hard decisions. And that is why we have the problem. And now they are beginning to look at how can we reduce this pain and they are coming up with policy. Even if it has not reduced the pain totally, and we hope in the near future it will reduce the pain. What we, what happened to us is the same thing that the Egyptian uh, uh, government did. But what they did was that they removed they removed subsidy in a lot of areas, and they also uh, floated their currency. But before they did that, they made sure they have a lot of liquidity with support from the IMF and World Bank, and even the European Union. So the first day they did such a policy, their currency came down, uh, lost about 50%. But the second day, the currency gained about 30%, because mm -hmm. they had the liquidity to say, oh, our currency is currently undervalued, so we can intervene. Those were type of the groundwork. We felt the foundation that would have put in place before we remove subsidy or before we liberalize the uh, float to the currency. But we didn't do that. But we are doing that. We are paying more higher price for it mm -hmm. going forward. But I think those policies are good policies that in the near future we'll see the result. But like I said, currently in the past 10 months, it has been very, very hard for Nigerians. But going forward, I believe that if these policies are still with a lot of sincerity of purpose, to see light at the end of the tunnel. Amen to that. That's what we want, to have that light at the end of the tunnel, to have that silver lining. Um, and, you know, all of these growing pains, because I would like to call it our growing pains and sacrifices that we're making, um, we would hope that, you know, it starts to pay off really soon. Not just at the end, but really, really soon. At least in the next few months, we should just, you know, just have some form of respite. But anyways, we want to say thank you. This is where we have to wrap it up on this segment. Thank you so much for coming and joining us. It was a pleasure having a conversation with you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Have yeah. Okay, we're speaking with Mukhtar Mohammed, is an international finance and economic an an analyst. And we've just been talking about the statement by um, the former deputy um, governor of the CBN, um, God, um, well, Kinsley Mogalu. And we were just saying that, you know, having to think of the Naira being 400 um, to the dollar is just a dream. Well, we hope that it's not going to be a dream for too long. And soon it might just be a reality. I mean, I look forward to a day whereby we would see one Naira equal one dollar that would be amazing <laughs> all right this is how we have, this is how we have to wrap it up on the show we want to say thank you for having a breakfast with us my name is rume paulton i'll see you again tomorrow have a nice day